A thought-provoking new book says, to be human is to suffer, but it's that pain which also brings healing and wisdom. The author of More Beautiful Than Before, How Suffering Transform Us, is Rabbi Steve Leader. He examines how we learn from painful events in our lives. Leader teaches those lessons while counseling his huge congregation as senior rabbi at the Wilshire Boulevard Temple. It is the oldest synagogue in Southern California. Rabbi Leader is with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Suffering is, is instructive. Suffering is good for us. Suffering leads us to what? In a way, I think we're all only truly whole after we've been broken somehow because there's a depth of empathy and wisdom and kindness that only comes from having suffered some form of physical or emotional pain. You know, success doesn't teach us very much. It, it only encourages us to keep doing the same. It's only really pain that forces us to change. It gets us way. to a place that we might not otherwise have gotten. There is no other way to get to that place. You say everybody at some point is going to walk through hell in their lives. You believe just don't come out empty handed. Exactly. We all walk through hell. We all, there are many kinds of hell, cancer, death, a kid in trouble, addiction, divorce, depression, anxiety. There are many forms of hell, but you don't have to come out of hell empty handed. You even speak, Rabbi, about you had to go through suffering yourself. To, you said you really didn't even understand it until you were brought to your knees by a very painful accident and had severe back problems. That's, it changed you, made you nicer, you said. It's true. It's absolutely true. I, spent, I thought rabbis were always nice. <laughs> well, nicer. <laughs> okay, nicer. <laughs> I don't think I was a bad guy before, but yeah. it definitely changed the way in which I relate to people when they come to me oh. in pain. Oh. Um, it, I've become a better listener. I have uh, become a kinder person. More empathetic. M more empathetic and more authentic when responding to their fears and anxieties. And, and it talked to you about taking care of yourself as well and, and not just your congregation. Yes. You went back to the temple and you were there for the services even when your wife wanted you at home uh, on the mend, right? Yeah. One thing I was struck by in the book, you said the hardest vocabulary words in the English language are, I'm sorry, please forgive me, apology accepted. Yes. What does that say about our state as a nation right now when we can't say those three phrases? Well, even more than I'm sorry. You know, there's a piece in this book called Hurt and Run, which talks about three words even more difficult for human beings to say than I'm sorry. And those three words are, I was wrong. Mm. That is a much higher degree of ownership, of culpability, of responsibility for our mistakes. I was wrong can change everything. It takes the sting out. It, it makes healing and reconciliation possible. But to say I was wrong requires a degree of humility that few people achieve without having suffered some kind of debilitating emotional or physical pain. You also say that no one endures pain better alone. Correct. So many times we try to suck it up, buck it up, and you said that's the wrong thing to do. That's correct. Uh, it's usually that go it alone attitude that gets us into trouble in the first place. There's another essay in the book called The Prisoner Cannot Free Himself. None of us can free ourselves. We have to be either in enough pain and therefore humble enough or needy enough to reach out. And if you reach out to people, you will be pleasantly surprised. They will help people lift you want from to that help, suffering. They? they do want to help. And of course, you will be disappointed by some but mostly pleasantly surprised by others. You know, you have a great line, the people who really matter don't mind and the people who mind don't really matter. That's that is right. so true. When you are suffering and you reach out, the people who really matter don't mind you reaching out. Yeah. And the people who mind, they really don't matter. Suffering does strip away a lot of nonsense from our lives. You also say don't always be comfortable, right? Yes, I, I think if we're too comfortable, it means we're doing something wrong, mm. right? It also means if we're comfortable to a certain degree, it means we're also turning a blind eye to the suffering of others. There's a piece in the book uh, from my diary when I visited Uganda. And, uh, you know, to be blind to that suffering in order to remain comfortable oneself is frankly to be a narcissistic, cold human being. We have to be open to the suffering of others. We need each other. And this book is about helping each other. It's a great Thank read. You, it's an easy read. You've got a congregation yeah. of 10,000 people, so it's at least 10,000. It's a lot of need. <laughs> yeah, a lot of need. Thank you very much for our Thank you. leader. Thank you. This is a really beautiful book. It's called More Beautiful Than Before. It's available wherever you like to buy your books.